I'm William Boughton and I'm delighted to be here in New York in, with Thea Musgrave in her apartment. <laughs> Welcome, Thea. Yeah, very nice to meet you. And you, for the first time. Right. How long have you lived in New York? Not very long, because when we first came to the States after we were married, I tried to get my husband to live in Britain for a little while, but then he had an irresistible invitation to start an opera company. This was in 1975. So for many, many years, we, after 1975, we lived in Virginia, in Norfolk, Virginia, and he founded the Virginia Opera, and where he remained nearly 40 years. Mm. However, during that time, I had an offer to come and teach at CUNY, which is the City University of New York. And, and so for about 15 years I did that, and I commuted up from Virginia to New York every week, and uh, taught, and then went back for long weekends, and did my own work, and looked after my husband, and saw the operas, and the rehearsal, and so on and so on. So that was great. What was really funny, however, was at some time during that time, a board member came up and said, where'd y'all live? And at that point, we were still living partly in California, and I was teaching in New York, and of course we were also in Norfolk, Virginia, so I think it was my husband said, well, we have three bedrooms. So the board member looked sort of relieved. Oh yes, so they live in a nice big mansion, you know, with three bedrooms and so on and so on. But then Peter spoiled the effect by saying, but each bedroom is in a different city, <laughs> which was nice. In fact, we had tiny apartments <laughs> in each place. <laughs> Were you here on 9-11? Were you living? I was actually right across the street, not in this particular apartment now, but just across the street. Yes, I was supposed to teach the very next day. I had flown, no, I was supposed to teach that evening. And I was work, I used to teach in the afternoons and evenings. So I was working in the morning and I thought it's funny, there's no phone calls and emails weren't coming in. I thought that's really strange. So I did my work and then I stopped and had some lunch and turned on the television. And then I saw this plane going into the World Trade Center and I thought, oh, a new movie, where's Sean Connery? How exciting we have to get to see that movie. And then I realized, no, that's, this is real. My God. So I tried to call my husband, but the phone lines were down. And I thought, well, I, I suppose I won't be teaching today, so I, I didn't know what to do. But in the end, I went out and walked up the street a few blocks where a colleague of mine, we were supposed to team teach that evening, Bruce Saylor, and he was there. And by, by good luck, because he had gone to take his daughter and therefore was a little late starting, and then at that point the bridges were, were down. <coughs> so he, he, he was there. So we spent some time together watching television and discussing things. And then I walked back home and I walked near Lincoln Center and they had spread a ribbon like police, you know, a yellow ribbon, police line, do not cross, as if that would stop terrorists. I mean, you know, what were they thinking of? And there were, I saw people walking up the street slowly as if they'd walked all the way from Wall Street because, I mean, this was now about three o'clock in the afternoon and 9-11 and happened early that morning. Mm. And so there was no uh, subways and buses weren't working, um, obviously. And then that evening, I called to some friends across the street and I said, you know, I don't want to be alone this evening. I mean, normally I don't mind, but I didn't want to be alone that evening. So I said, do you think we could go out for dinner together? So Michael and his wife said, sure. So we walked up Amsterdam and some of the places were all shut down and, and one or two places were open. And it was a beautiful, beautiful evening. Just one, it was September 11th, of course, so it was sunny and the sky was clear. It was absolutely beautiful, and for a moment you thought, you know, we're having a nice evening. 
and people were talking and chatting. Of course, underneath was this horror about what had happened and what that was going to mean. So <laughs> that was my experience of 9-11. I mean, and nobody knew quite what had happened and why and what was what lay in the future for everybody. Yeah. Terrifying experience. Terrifying. Really terrifying. Absolutely. So, you came here initially um, to teach? I came, as I thought, for three months. Um, I knew Peter Fricker slightly, but then he and his wife left for Santa Barbara and uh, when Peter took up this job. And then I heard from him that he would be t uh, taking a sabbatical and would I like to come to Santa Barbara for three months and, and take over. I had only once been to the States when I came after studying with Boulanger in Paris. I came to Tanglewood in the late 50s and studied with Aaron Copeland who was also a student, I think Boulang one of Boulanger's first students actually. And so I had the chance to be on the East Coast up in Tanglewood and a little bit in New York. So this was a chance to go to the West Coast, which was a whole other country, really very different in those days. So I thought this was an adventure, why not? And then what happened, so I was set to come to teach in April, May, a little bit of June, it was what the spring quarter. But then I was in London watching television around about February and I saw in the news, in the national, the international news, that the students in Santa Barbara had burnt down the bank. <laughs> I thought, why am I going somewhere where students burn down banks? And I nearly cancelled. I thought, you know, I don't need that. But anyway, things calmed down. And this was really a protest because it was the height of the Vietnam War, which was getting more and more. And I, th I think living in London, I wasn't really aware of how serious it was. It, you know, we, we knew about it, of course, but we didn't reckon really what the implications were. Soon did when I got here, and then a, a few weeks later, Kent, the famous Kent State, every American remembers those words, Kent State Uprising, and a lot of hostility and, and discussions and so on. But the interesting thing is that when you live through periods of time like that, when you talk to people, you meet them on a deeper level than perhaps you do normally. Yeah. Because you talk about real things and real issues and what do you think about this and what do you think about that, you get into issues right away. And that's when I met this guy, Peter Mark, and just over a year later we got married. So that changed my life totally.